Josh Hurley is chasing that, and both he and Casera so far in practice were absolutely in a world of their own. Some half a second quicker than anybody else in the field. So it could well be a Hurley and Casera story yet again, but watch out for Ernie Francis Jr. He's only 19 points adrift in third position, so it's anybody's game. We've got Bridgehampton coming up, and we've also got Lime Rock to finish out the year. So it's been a really interesting. And then we go for real as we go to mid-Ohio at the end of June. So look forward to that. I want to remind you to download the app if you haven't already. The tr go to gotransam.com for all the news stories, but you can go there, download the app or the SVRA app. And that's where we'll be live streaming when we go to mid-Ohio. And if we continue to do some e-racing, that'll be there too. But uh, that is our modus operandi, so to speak. All identical Corvettes, you may, not, may, may notice. So no advantage for any of the drivers. It does make a difference, though, how many laps you do. And once again, it's that man, Scott Borchetta, who is the teammate to Edward Savagian, who tops the laps of 223. And that's a lot of laps around Spa, I can assure you. This, of course, one of the longest tracks on the Formula One calendar. And of course, it's been the site of many a 24 hour race and as well as motorcycle 24 hour race. I've actually done a motorcycle 24 hour race here. As we look at Tyler Casera in the number four. And Casera obviously lost the bet in the week because he shaved his head. I don't know what he lost, but uh, he shouldn't be really betting with Josh Hurley because uh, he's lost his hair over it. Or he was just, he was telling us in the driver's briefing, he was just going for a bit of a, a slimmer cut, you know, aerodynamics and all with the Kemmel straight. Seems to be working for him. So let's just explain quickly on the rules as we take a look at the leaderboard, led by Thomas Merrill to 18.5 so far. Borchetta really doing a good job. Well, he's put the laps in and now it's paying dividends to 19.9, Lawrence and White. But we have one qualifying session. Then we'll go into a nine lap race around this famous circuit. And that will be followed by a reverse top 10 from race one into another nine lap race, race two. So 16 races in the whole championship. So still plenty of points up for grabs with three rounds and six races to go. And like I said at the top, just four points between Josh Hurley, who leads the championship, and Tyler Casera in second place. Incidentally, Ernie Francis Jr., our current six-time and current TA champion, but uh, having won at Daytona and been Mr. Consistent, he's out there too. And here is a great story for you. Look at this. Juan Manuel Correa of Miami, Florida, America's top single-seater driver in Europe currently, sadly, was injured here at Spa last year. And this is his return to the circuit that uh, almost caused him more problems than he could have imagined. And he's getting into more problems now as we as we speak. He's taking out the number 15 of Cliff White from Huntsville, Alabama. There's Tyler Casera. But this is a big moment for Juan Manuel Correa to come back to Spa. It may be in uh, the virtual world, but if you don't think his mind is going to go back to that uh, sad day uh, in F2 when he was involved with the Antoine Hubert incident, so a very special day for him. And he's brought Picho Toledano and Javier Gonzalez from Mexico, two good friends of his, to support him in this race. And we welcome them too, as well as some of the other youngsters. We've also got a young Moroccan via Miami, Florida as well. And that is Michael Ben Yahia, a 19-year-old, who is currently racing and e-racing at the moment. And uh, delighted to have him on board. And I think what's going to be interesting is to see whether any of these young sim racers, as well as single-seater experts, can take on Josh, here he is, and Tyler Casera and make an impact into this race. Certainly, Josh Hurley will be trying to stay out of the way of those drivers, get a lead, and stay in that lead. With this being such a long track, I don't expect the racing to be that tight if you can get away. It will be a chance for slipstreaming through the Camel Strait and maybe through Blanchemont and down towards the bus stop. But uh, 
generally speaking, I don't think uh, it's going to be too tight a racing unless you're able to go wheel to wheel and use that slipstream. We shall see. It's been a brilliant season so far for Josh Hurley. He's been having a lot of fun with this. And in the real world, as well as being a racing driver, oh, that wasn't very polite. As well as being a racing driver, he uh, does a lot of coaching and teaching. And Hurley just uh, slows down, takes a little bit of a respite, ta catches his breath after that little incident. And now time running out with less than one minute to go in our qualifying. And Hurley has gone quicker so far, 2.16.6. Similar to his practice time, Casera second, 2.17.3. But Casera knows he can go quicker than that. He may have had some traffic in his last run, but uh, both Hurley and Casera in practice were in the 2.16s. Racino does his quickest lap at 217.5. And Edwards of Agent goes second quickest, 217.3, but still not on the pace of Hurley yet. As we look at Rydquist, Carl Rydquist, the Swede turned American, racing back in Europe. He's already been to Barcelona. He'd raced there. I'm not sure if he's raced here in the real world, but he's done a lot of real world endurance racing. So uh, odds are that he has been here before. And if he doesn't or hasn't, he'll have certainly done it on the sim. The one thing that you can be sure is that even if you're new to sim racing, Spa is on your bucket list of wanting to go around. It always is the case. I think Monaco, Spa, a few others, Watkins Glen, are absolute favorites around the world. And I just want to say, talking of around the world, thank you for tuning in to our E-Trans Am series. We had over 200,000 viewers last time out at Riverside for our walk back into yesteryear. Now there's Ernie Francis Jr. And currently in sixth position at 217.5, but as you can see, he is officially hitted. And there's Wood going through Pouon. These famous names of racing and finally get to see Trans Am roar through the forests of Arden. I'd love to do this in the real world. I'm sure our drivers would too. I'm going to be joined by Ben Sissel. He's, uh, I think he missed his bus from, from downtown Spa. So he's going to have to walk up the hill and uh, try not to get too many flags and too many miniature cars or stop at any of the nice brew houses along the way. And certainly don't stop for any of those uh, mayonnaise fries. Those will slow you down. That's half a second a lap if you start eating those. I've been to this circuit many times and we're blessed because this is the first time I've never seen it without rain. They say the people of Spa don't get old, they rust. Always seems to rain at some point in a three-day weekend here for sure. We may get lucky though. We've got two short nine-lap races and at the moment anyway, fingers crossed, Super Yens has not turned on the water fountains. Spa went through quite a lot of changes in the last 15 years or so, in the paddock especially. It was so cramped, they had to... The old pits were on the right here, going down the hill towards uh, Radilon and Eau Rouge. And there is the famous Eau Rouge. It's so frightening. And there you just saw one driver getting it wrong there. But that concludes our qualifying, and it pretty much has gone to form. There's the new pit lane. And to the left is where the old pit lane was. But it is Hurley, 216.6, who takes the pole position with Tyler Casera to 16.9, nothing really in it, 0.242. Edward Savagin did a really good lap towards the end there to take third. Then it's Archer, Racino, Francis, the youngsters coming on strong. Merrill is seventh, Rydquist eighth. Benny Yahia is in ninth position. Benny Yahia is uh, really the one we should be watching because he's coming in almost as a ringer this weekend, the 19-year-old from Morocco and Miami, Florida. In fact, his mother's from Belgium. Maybe he's got a maybe he's got something we don't know about here with a little bit of a Belgium advantage. Tenth is Southern. JP Southern in tenth, then Wood Lopez, Borchetta, Alan White, and Lawrence. That's your top 16. No real surprises. Juan Manuel Korea not showing as well as he had in practice, 226.5, and he may be just saving his powder for the race itself. So that's the qualifying at the moment. It is Hurley in pole position for round six from Spa-Francorchamps. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back.
Bonjour, mademoiselle et mon enfant. That's the best I can do in French. Welcome back to Spa Francochamps in Belgium as we get ready for round six of the 2020 Trans Am by Pirelli Esports Championship. Jonathan Green and hopefully be joined by Ben Sissel, who's having to make a long way up from the village of Spa. And I don't think he's got his hire car, so he's going to have to do the walk. But we'll wait for him. But here we are. We are ready for what should be a cracking run here towards Eau Rouge for the first time. Josh Hurley will lead them down the hill for the first time. And this first corner is imperative to get right. Hurley leads them. Casera right there with them and Edward Savagian down the Kemmel straight for the first time. Nine laps in all. And now the jostling four position begins as Hurley will try to hold them all off. Savagian in the all red, looks to the inside as they come to Legume for the first time. Hurley on the inside and Casera squeezes through. Yes, through goes the number four on the number three and that's the championship in action right there. Casera four points adrift, but now goes into the lead. Savagian looking for a way past as Hurley drops to second place. Down towards Puon for the first time. And that was a really, really intelligent move by Tyler Casera of Manaheim, Pennsylvania. As they head down into Puon. So they sort themselves out. It's Casera, Hurley, Savagian, Francis, Archer, Merrill, Racino, Southern, Rydquist and Wood. Already the field styling to spread out. But that was a really good move by Casera. But now Hurley coming back at him as they head down towards the back of the circuit. Into Stavolo. And this is a key corner, Stavolo, because this is the long run from here, right at the back of the circuit. And it's basically flat out through Corbe Paul Frere, Blanchemont, and then down towards the famous bus stop chicane where literally you're going from 160 miles an hour down to about 30. There's JP Southern. He's got his own battle going on. He's side by side through Blanchemont. You can't do that in a Trans Am car, but he did it anyway. Great racing into that famous chicane then. And that's uh, Michael Benayahia. Uh, ben he was racing with there. Man from Miami, Florida, via Morocco. I believe his mother, I said she was Belgium, but she was a consul general in Miami representing Belgium. So maybe they've pulled out the red carpet for him today. JP Southern down towards Eau Rouge. The former single-seater driver. And you saw a little bit of air there as he hit, headed up the Kemmel straight. That's um, Nick Racino just behind JP Southern. 25 is Lawless Allen from Van Nuys, California. Our TA2 driver youngster. And coming side by side. And through goes Allen. Oh, a little bit of contact there. And round goes Lawless Allen. Well, that was a bit of a lawless move. Not sure if you'll get away with that one. And I'm talking about the red car. Was that Savagin or was it? Yes, I think it was Edward Savagin. No, it can't have been. It must have been Scott Borchetta because you can see Edward Savagian. Here he is in third position. A man from Dallas, Texas, who took a win last time out at Riverside. Really impressive. He's had a, an interesting run as uh, Edward. He swapped over to VR. It made him sick. He took everything, including ginger, to try to cure himself from motion sickness. Said he had it for four days. Hated it. But he doesn't look as though he's sick at all right now. He looks as though he's in the throes of ecstasy going around this very famous circuit out of Stavolo. And it's somewhat eerie when you are at Spa because you really are in the middle of nowhere. I say the forest of Ardennes, but uh, you take, uh, take a trip to the left or the right and you're lost in the woods for a long time. It's easy. There's a cart circuit in there somewhere. Down towards the chicane. Let's watch as he goes from over 130 miles an hour and drops right down through this very tricky last turn. Good job they're not doing pit stops because it's also pit entry. There's Nick Racino. Had a good run, has Nick. 
And I was asked before this spa race who I thought might come to the front and come to maybe uh, challenge some of our leading men. And Racino was one of them. He's currently in eight. There he is, just going through La Source and down the hill again. And as I kind of expected, the field starting to spread out a little bit. But Hurley has got the advantage by 0.6 over Surveyor and Casera has built on his lead overall and he's got half a second but that won't be enough at this stage to stop Hurley from catching I'm sure it only needs a bit of traffic for Tyler Casera and things could change dramatically Lawless Allen has got back and going again he goes through Eau Rouge and for those of you who've never been to Spa it, it is quite incredible imagine Circuit of the Americas and effectively double it in terms of the hill and the lift and the fact that you are flat out. It's not like you get to the top as in Kota and then slow right down at the apex. You are flat out all the through, all the way through Eau Rouge. And then there's the longest straight coming after that. So it's a key component of this circuit. So Lawless Allen has got back going again. He's down in 14th. He's now battling with Boris Said. And Boris, one of the few drivers who's actually been to this circuit, uh, he drove here, he did some testing here, and has also driven it in some of the endurance races back in the day. A little bit of damage there to one of the pink cars was that uh, Doug Winston, maybe, down in 17th position in the 39. There's second place Hurley. Now, the championship playing out right in front of us as Casera and Hurley, and I've just Get the feeling with Tyler Casera. He's cut all his hair off for this weekend. I was alluding to it earlier. So we go back with Hurley and we'll see the maestro at work now as he comes down towards the chicane. Now this chicane here is one potential overtake. There's another one coming up now after the start finish at La Source. But you've got to be tucked up closer than he is right now. Another idea is to get the slingshot here and start building on a move right here. When I say slingshot, go nice and wide or use as much power as you can early on. Tuck yourself in as Hurley is doing behind Casera now down the hill. And then at the top of Eau Rouge, pop out. Maybe not too early because you might lose a double potential slipstream, but this is exactly what Hurley's doing. And look at the air he got there. Now Hurley now lining himself up for a run on Casera. He's tucked in right behind in the slipstream now as they head down towards Lake Coombe. Classic Spa racing, but Casera is mindful to it and breaks very late into Lecum and doesn't give Hurley the opportunity. And now Hurley will try to build again. And there's a couple more places, maybe 12 and 13 coming up where he might have another pop. But this is great racing and you can see they're in a world of their own. These two pulling away from the rest of the field. Ben Yahia, we just got a glimpse of him there in his own battle in the all blue and black. There he is. Young 19 year old. He's got another 18 year old, JP Southern, who's just graduated high school in front of him. So it's the youngsters battle, and then Nick Racino, who's a little bit older than both of them. But those three going down towards Puhan. Here comes Racino. Nicely done on the inside of the entry to Puhan. And he's through on Ben Yahia. And He's now going to go in pursuit of this man, the number 61, J.P. Southern. Through campus corner and down towards Stavolo. Back in the days of the likes of David Hobbs and many others, this was a road circuit, genuinely street circuit, and it was much longer, in fact. And there's all sorts of war stories of people going off course and into people's fields and hitting barns and hay bales and all the rest of it. It's a little safer these days, but it's still very treacherous. A little bit of damage to Scott Borchetta. Well, both cars, I think Doug Winston and Scott Borchetta's cars, slightly damaged. And that's a shame, because I know that Scott Borchetta was really looking forward to this. He's done something like, well, he has done over 223 laps in practice leading up to this race. And given that... Uh, that takes a good couple of minutes. It's, it's a lot of time on the sim as we go on board now with second place Josh Hurley going up a rouge. And this is that view. Look at that. Completely unsighted as you head through there. 
And now he's just not close enough at this time. What he'll try to do, I quite like the position he's in now because he might just be able to get to a slipstream before the corner, but not this time. So Hurley will have to wait. But I think he's biding his time because he knows that really he's only going to get one real chance to overtake Casera and make it stick and then hope it's towards the end of the race so that Casera, oh, JP Southern and Racino in a battle. JP Southern losing out and Racino going through. Racino up to sixth place now. Ben Amayi is still there in eighth, but Southern drops down to seventh. He comes back on the inside. Good racing. Look at this. Side by side for the pair of them as they head down the hill. And Racino's got the better line, but doesn't hold it. JP Southern says, no, thank you. And this is cracking racing down towards Puan again. This is a flat out fourth gear turn. And all that messing about has allowed young Michael Benahia of Miami, Florida to catch back up with Racino and now challenge him. I've just heard that Ben's been arrested. That's not good. Uh, he didn't pay for his beer as he was rushing up to the circuit. So hopefully the authorities will let him go and we can get him back up to the commentary booth. Ben, I told you not to mess about when you're on when you're on vacation like this. Not good. Got to learn the ways of the Europeans. Got to finish your beer. You can't you can't slap it. Slip it down. Anyway, Casera still put and the gap has come down slightly. Hurley. He's doing a really good job of reeling in Casera, but without doing anything too dramatic. That's a very wide line for White as he goes through. The third member of the Big Machine Vodka troupe. And Dylan Archer. I spoke to Dylan just before the start of the race. And I was asking him what are the tricky parts of the circuit and what does he enjoy? He says he enjoys the Kemmel straight. It's Carl Reidquist as well. But uh, he said there's a few places that uh, are still... It's one of those tracks. I don't know how many times you've been here or whether you've done a 24-hour race here. This is one of those circuits that always has something to learn for you. There's never anybody that says, yeah, I've conquered Spa. I know exactly what I'm doing. And if they did, I wouldn't believe them. Carl Reidquist heads towards Eau Rouge. Halfway past the halfway point now of this first race. One of two races here at Spa. You see how the car gets light and almost does a wheelie over the top of the hill there as they come to the top of Eau Rouge. And now Hurley dialing in on Casera. And this is going to be a really interesting lap because Casera's mirrors are going to be full of Josh Hurley. Pennsylvania versus California. Hurley using all the track and more as they head down into Wuhan. The long, long left hand. It's basically a double apex. Seems to go on forever. And then down towards turn 13, which is a tight right-hander, third gear through here. And Hurley now will try to build towards Stavolo coming up in a moment. And again, tuck himself behind, late break into Stavolo. That's exactly what he does. And again, a double apex through here. Now, this is where he's got to be good. They've got to get good drive out of this corner now, onto the back straight, past the old farmhouse. And then it's the run down to Blanchemont, which is flat out all the way down through here. And you can see the speed as we look back from Casera. There we go, flat out through Blanchemont. Wonderful pictures here. Great stuff done by the OMG boys and Talk Motorsport. And that's another opportunity for an overtake that Hurley isn't close enough to as they come through the chicane. And on to the straight again. I wonder if Hurley's just going to save himself for one lunge and one lunge only because in some ways, with that long camel straight, I'm not sure you want to be leading. You're almost a little bit of a target and Casera knows it. He's the man with the pressure on him at the moment and he's got to drive faultlessly. Hurley knows it. And Hurley right now is just putting enough pressure on to try to force Casera into a mistake and he's looked, but he hasn't tried to make that run on him yet. And you can just see he's almost holding station. I think he could get closer. And he's waiting probably until the next lap or the final lap, which is risky business. But uh, the way these two have fought throughout the season, they know each other's game so well. In fact, they've been finding out in Discord just how uh, similar they are in their approach to racing. 
And like I said, there's been a bit of smack talk. Josh Hurley was telling me earlier in the season. He just watches practice until somebody beats his time. He gets on, does four or five laps, beats the time, and then jumps back off. So you might see when you get the lap charts that he's got the least amount of laps, but he's literally foxing people. So when somebody gets a false sense of security, Josh Hurley jumps back on and goes faster. Here comes Ryquist. Putting some pressure on the 34 of Wood. Really only one line down this hill though. There is an overtake into Puan, but you've got to be right there and he's not just close enough at the moment. Here we go. Ryquist had a good run at Barcelona. In fact, he's had some good runs all the way through as we look at Thomas Merrill, currently in fifth position, and a mistake there by Ernie Francis Jr. And that's allowed Thomas Merrill to get on top. The HB Jr. is 81, going for it now on our current TA champion. And Francis Jr. just got one wheel off and it slowed him down. We go on board with Merrill. Here he comes through Blanchemont. That's a risky move. Flat out. And he's done it. That is great driving. Absolute commitment there. As Thomas Merrill goes up to fourth place, Ernie Carl Francis Jr. knows his best hope of getting past is to try now. And Ernie not happy with that. Couldn't make it happen. And it's the HP Tuners number 81 of Thomas Merrill who gets through into fourth place here in the closing stages. About to start the penultimate lap now. Ernie Francis Jr. will have more time just about to try and get back at him. And if he stays where he is now, he may just get him down the camel straight. There's JP Subban, currently in sixth. Racino, Benny Ahia in eighth position, then Archer ninth. Wood is tenth. Ridequist 11th. Fine. Alan Lopez. Borchetta in the top 15. Another good result for Scott, especially with that damage to the rear wing there. So to stay in the points, very impressive. Now, here comes Josh Hurley, and he's going for it. No, he can't quite do it at the end of the camel straight. And he's running out of time now. So Hurley getting desperate. And Casera doing a brilliant job of staying cool, calm, and collected here in the woods of Belgium. No rain anticipated. Casera doesn't have to worry about that. He's just worried about the torrent behind him that is a massive storm called Josh Hurley. And these two have gone wheel to wheel all season long. And I think they've got a lot of respect for each other's driving as well. They've both been very clean. And that's no mean feat when you're racing sims. Learned a lot about sim racing in the last six weeks, and uh, it's fascinating that uh, there is almost a bubble. You'll hear the race director talk of a bubble around your car, which you don't want to get any closer to the opponent because you can literally get in that bubble and bounce both of you out, out of the track. And that's what exactly what Casera is trying to avoid right now as Southern and Racino as we go back on board with Nick Racino. Chasing down the young 18-year-old J.P. Southern. Southern, of course, coming from Formula 3 and Formula 4. Beautiful sound echoes through the forests. And now he's got to run. Oh, <laughs> he thought about it. Maybe he should try to break him into the chicane because he tried a Casera, but it didn't work. Racino now pops out to the inside. That's more of a textbook overtake at Spa because you really can't come back after that overtake. And unless you make a mistake at La Source, that is the move made. So Nick Racino has recovered well there. He thought about it at Blanchemont, changed his underwear, and then did it at the chicane after all. Here comes JP Southern at La Source. Can't quite do it there. Now Southern, last lap, will have another chance at Camel Straight. Want to know where Josh Hurley is, though? Because here he is. We're going down the Kettle straight for the last time. Josh Hurley, he's got a chance. He's got to run on Tyler Casera. And this is surely the only and one time he's going to make this move. He's forced to the outside. Casera driving brilliantly. And Hurley can't do it. Casera holds on. But Hurley's not giving up just yet. Now he's going to try every which way. And they're both loose. So Josh Hurley knew his best chance was at the end of the Kemmel straight into Le Coombe, tried it, but was left out, hung out to dry by Tyler, just holding a very good race line in the middle of the track. That's excellent racing at Spa. And now Hurley just backing off a little bit. He'll try and build up now for these last 
few corners to get to the back of this track and try to see if he can get tucked in behind him at Stavolo, which we'll be coming up to very soon indeed. Two corners to go, and then just one long straight back. There's the karting circuit to the right. And now through Stavolo. Now he's got to get good drive out of here. Oh, and he makes a little bit of a twitch and a mistake, and that could be all it takes for Casera to be home and dry. Here comes the number four. He was four points behind Josh Hurley when they went into this race. It's been a classic between the pair of them, but Tyler Casera has been faultless. He's driven with his mirrors. He's had four eyes, quite literally. One looking forward, or two looking forward, two looking back, because he had to. And he comes up to the last chicane now, and as long as he doesn't make a mistake here, he's home free. Hurley will take him and keep him honest, but it's going to be the Carbotech-sponsored number four who comes to complete Spa. And an excellent victory, and one he will remember for a long time to come, especially if he takes home the Trigon Trophy. That's been a really, really excellent run, but of course, both of them now will start ninth and 10th for the second race. But at the checkered flag, Tyler Casera does it in style. We're watching as to where Francis comes across the line. Here he is now. He will finish in fifth position, just behind Merrill. Savagian gets on the podium again, Edward Savagian. There's Dylan Archer. Rounding out a top 10 finish in ninth, just ahead of Rydquist. Wood will finish 11th. Borchetta is gonna get up to 14th. There's his damaged car. And he just got ahead of Doug Winston. So those two, I was asking Doug Winston earlier in the week who he, who he likes to battle with. And he said he's had some really good runs with Scott Borchetta. And it looks as though they've done it again because Borchetta is 14th, Winston 15th, Allen just ahead of them. Boris said 17th using his track knowledge. Getting up there into the top 20. Kent Vaccaro, another single-seater maestro, down in 19th position. And a shout-out to Juan Manuel Correa, coming back to Spa after that horrific track. And we're delighted he's come to join us, racing in Miami, Florida right now as he repairs his broken leg. And we're delighted to have him on board, the Formula 2 driver. And there's Kent Vaccaro, the number 26. Another single-seater man racing in the States currently, and he will finish 18th. Takes the chequered flag now. But it's Casera, Hurley, and Savagian. That's your top three from race one. Reverse top 10 for race two. And I'm heading down to the police station to see if I can get Ben out and bring him back up to the commentary booth. Uh, but it doesn't matter. He'll, he'll be fine. He'll, he'll get, they'll feed him. Confirmation then of the result. Congratulations to a great run under massive pressure or Tyler Casera of Pennsylvania. He takes the victory, but just half a second ahead of Hurley, who had one go down the Camel Strait into Lecoon, but couldn't quite pull it off. Savagian takes third. Merrill Francis, Racino Southern. Then Ben Haia in eighth position. Archer, Rydquist, Wood, fine. Lawless Allen, who got turned around, but managed to get back to 13th place. Borchetta, 14th. Winston, White, said Vaccaro, White. Lotoski in 20th position, Juan Manuel Carrera at 21st, Lopez and Toledano, Toledano, his two friends who've joined this weekend. So they've all finished line astern with each other, probably having a bit of fun out there, Arcado and Lawrence. Not sure what happened to Cameron Lawrence, but not where he should be. So that's the first race in the can. We'll take a short break here in Belgium and we'll be right back with more from Spa.
Welcome back to Spa Francochamp in the Forest of Arden in Belgium. It's a beautiful location and thankfully no rain today. That's a very unusual time to come to this part of the world without seeing some rain. But we have had the police raining down on uh, young Ben uh, getting in trouble. But I, I'm, I'm glad to say my wallet is lighter, but I'm back with my cohort. Mr. Ben Sissel, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you so much. They were not going to let me out, but you vouched for me. So thank you. Well, what I did was I actually called uh, Michael Ben Ahia's mother, who is a consul general in Miami for Belgium, and she sorted things out. Oh, well, that's good. Well, whatever you did, it worked, and I'm happy to be here. I did get to see the race, and what a race that was. And I have to say, our two top guys are now absolutely tied going into this race, Jonathan. That is excellent news, and you can see they are ready to go for race two. A reverse top ten, remember? And that means that Archer is on pole position in the number 32. On come the lights. Out go the lights. Away we go. And it looks as though Archer's got away well. Ridequist is going well too. Archer in second place. Up the hill and up Eau Rouge they come. And it is Archer in second place. Ridequist leading. Everybody Jostling for position for the first time, a nine-lap race, but the fast men are in ninth and tenth. Hurley's ninth, Casera tenth. Let's see if they can make up some spots coming into the Lecume for the first time, but it's Reitquist who leads them. Nick Racino on the outside in the all-purple 33. Somebody getting turned around. One of them is Nick Casino. Now, <laughs> Casino, it may as well have been a casino because that's a complete lottery. So... Nick Racino gets turned round, but did he also involve some of the top men in the championship? I'm not sure just yet. Let's hope that Hurley and Casera have got through. Francis was, was knocked out in some of that. It looks like Ernie Francis dropped down to 16th. I think he and Racino got into it. And I think Casera was, you know what? Casera was also involved. He's down in 13th position. Hurley has survived to eighth. There is Hurley. So, drama indeed at the beginning of this. And as you rightly point out, Ben, they are neck and neck on points. And now, this trouble. Early's not out of the woods, quite literally here in Spa, because look at the traffic he's got in front of him. And there's 81, Merrill, who's no slouch. He's got Wood, Savagian. And in fact, Savagian is holding off Hurley at the moment. Savagian, of course, on the podium last time out as we look back from the HP Tuners, Thomas Merrill, number 81. Great backward-looking shot to see the kind of speeds they're going through the forest here. Ooh, somebody going wide. Is that Doug Winston? I think it was. And here comes Casera. He needs to start making moves quickly. He's got Juan Manuel Correa in front of him. And for those of you who don't know that name, Trans Am-wise, no, he's a Formula 2 driver. In fact, he's America's top Formula 2 driver and probably the closest American to Formula 1. But sadly, recovering from a horrific injury that he had here at Spa in the real world in Formula 2 last year. And he's chosen this weekend to effectively get those demons away. And I'm delighted for him. I hope to speak to him afterwards and see how it went for him. But uh, I think he's just taking his time and taking a Sunday afternoon walk. He doesn't want to get in the way of the championship, and through goes Casera. Carrera will follow him, getting a little bit of a slipstream from Tyler Casera. But there's what's in front. Oh, and Carrera comes back at him. Good racing, but loses out. Oh, gets sideways and spins it around. One man, well, well, he got everything right, then it all went horribly wrong. Ben. You can see there's a lot of traffic up there now for Tyler Casera to deal with. He's not been arrested again. I haven't got any money left. So, all eyes on Josh Hurley. He's currently in seventh position, but Casera is the one we've also got to keep an eye on. He's down in 11th place, having been down in 13th position. And all that Casera wants to do now is just stay as close as he can in position-wise to Josh Hurley. Here he is again, Casera. Two of the nine gone.
He's got number 89. He's got Borchetta ahead of him. And repaired that wing has Scott, which is good news for him. And the mechanics got to work in the break. Oh, there's Ernie Francis Jr. bouncing over the curbs. Ernie down in 16th position, and that's not a usual place. But then again, one thing I know about Ernie Francis Jr. is if he's in trouble, he'll sort himself out. Oh, look at what's going on in front of him. Really dicey battles there as they come towards the bus stop. Francis has got to be careful not to get himself involved, and he had to take avoiding action. Doug Winston breaking very late, and Francis almost lost it there. But he recovers well, and it's great to be on board with Ernie Francis Jr. as he took the avoiding action. And everybody putting in faster slaps now. Rydquist. 217 now. So it's Rydquist, Archer, Southern. That's your top three. Ben Yahia is in fourth position. Then it's Merrill Savagian and Hurley. Casera's made one more place up. He's got Borchetta next. And as you can see... He's coming alongside Scott Borchetta. As they head into Le Coombe. he hasn't made it stick, or has he? Yes, Tyler Casera. Well, I don't think they touch, but either way, Borchetta got the worst of that. And I think he was trying to give him room and that uh, put himself off, but Scott Borchetta probably realized it was Casera and realized he didn't want any piece of it. One of the things the uh, Driver said in the driver's briefing was that, uh, remember, there's a championship going on. And nobody wants to get in the way of Tyler Casera and Josh Hurley. And remember, when they started this race, they're on equal points. Four races to go after this. How exciting is this? They are currently seventh and eighth on the road. Hurley, a few seconds up the road from this man, Tyler Casera. He hasn't got sight of him yet. But he surely will as we go back with this battle for third place. Southern and Ben Ayer, two of the youngsters. There is the Moroccan Floridan. Oh, where's he going? Just hit, hit the wall. I think, he took, I think he took a call then. No, I think he's out. Well, there's some ghosting going on there, but uh, there is Edward Savagian. He's in sixth place at the moment. There's Hurley in seventh. Now, how far back is Casero? He almost just got a glimpse of him there. But it's, uh, it's about three seconds Hurley's got. But with this traffic in front of him, including this man here, the Big Machine Vodka Sponsor 38 of Dallas, Texas, Edward Savagent, this is not easy at all because this is the whole field in front of Hurley. So <laughs> unlike the previous race, they are not spreading out. There is less than a second between the top seven. That's incredible. And there is Hurley at the back. Now, Hurley... Needs to use the Camel straight. That's his safest and most obvious way to get past this traffic. What he doesn't want to do is be slowed down and allow Casera, who's just done his fast slap, to catch up. It's not close enough as they come towards Lake Coombe this time, seven, eight, and nine. But you can see, as we look past and look into the rear view mirror of Tyler Casera, I'm sure he's did the same, looked in the mirror to see just exactly where Casera was and he was nowhere. As we look back down the Camel Straight, we couldn't quite see Casera, so he's some distance away, but this battle is raging on. This is great stuff. And JP Southern is just ahead of this, but this battle is Ben Yahia, Merrill, Savagian and Hurley. No real room for an overtake through here. Great to see these flame-breathing monsters. Oh, Zam. Never before in our 54-year history have we raced here. But hey, it's a new era. It's a new time for racing. And 2020 will be remembered probably for one of the most extraordinary starts to a year for the whole planet, let's be obvious. And it was great if you weren't in our previous broadcasts. I want to put a head, heads up to the likes of three-dimensional services and Kerry Hitt 
and many, many other country, uh, uh, companies, including Tyler Casera's company, who have been making PPE equipment for the COVID-19 recovery. So hats off to all of the Trans Am drivers and community. Now, where is Hurley? He's still at the back of this group as they come to La Source. And he just, oh, he's got through on Edward. Oh, he barges his way through on Edward Savagin. And Super Yens might have something to say about that. Meanwhile, look at this. Everybody getting into it. And Hurley loses out again to Savagin, but he'll have the run on him. Down the Camel straight. Here comes Hurley on Savagin. He made a move at the source, and I thought he'd made it stick. But now he's got the run on him. And he's got the better line as Josh Hurley. And Savagin will have to give in. Or does he? He keeps his foot in, does the Texan. As only a Texan would. Oh, they touch. That's the whole championship. Hurley just about escapes. And look who's coming. Tyler Casera right there with him now. And I knew this could happen because as Hurley got into a battle with Edward Savagin, he's just allowed Casera to catch right back up. Meanwhile, there's more battles going on between Ben Yahia and Merrill, who don't give a jot about what's going on with Hurley, as they're in their own battle right now. Meanwhile, Rydquist, we haven't seen him hardly, but the Swede is some um, half a second up the road from Dylan Archer, who's having a splendid day here in Spa. What a race this is turning out to be. And like I said at the beginning of the show, this championship on a knife edge right now. And I think it's going to be just as close when we finish it. We've got four more races after this. We're going into the unknown again for the next round. And then it's to Lime Rock for the championship decider. And back with number 68, there is Juan Manuel Correa. We're spending a lot of time talking about it quite rightly. As the young 20-year-old from Miami, Florida, coming back from serious injury. Would you believe it? He's driving just with his left foot right now because his right foot, which he had to have uh, effectively bone growth to grow his leg. He lost 10 uh, centimeters, seven, uh, seven to 10 centimeters of his bone from that crash at uh, Spa. And they're rebuilding the bone now. So he's all clamped up. And so he's driving the sim with just his left leg. So pretty impressive to say he is where he is. He's currently just outside the top 10 behind Borchetta in 11th place and ahead of Lawless Allen. There's Dylan Archer, second place man. But you can see... Rydquist just ahead of him. And JP Southern not that far behind. So we've got a good battle here at the front too. Far from over with six of the nine laps done. Casera does the fastest lap at 217.183 at the perfect time. He's still behind Hurley, but not that far behind as we go back quite rightly with the leaders to see if Archer can take a pop at Rydquist. Rydquist got a lot more experience of driving the young Dylan Archer, who's what we call a future Trans Am star. And of course, his father and grandfather, very famous names in the world of Trans Am. So we do hope that Mini Archer becomes a Mini Me. He's sponsored by the family name, the Realty Company. As we go back with our leader, Ridequist, and Archer all over the back of him at the perfect time. Now, as we saw in race one, You've got to be really careful when you're in second place. You want the lead, but you've got to choose your time. And if you choose too late, as Casera, as uh, Early did with Casera, there's really only one major overtake. And I think you should go for it on the penultimate lap, just in case you need a second run. And Archer's looking to do just that. He's hounding him, isn't he, as they come towards Stavolo. Now he should have a run on him down towards the bus stop. What he should do now, I think, is tuck himself in get himself as thin as he can, get his best slipstream as he can, get that little bit of extra horsepower to give him the slingshot as they come towards the bus stop and then just jink out to the inside. Best laid plans of mice and men. It's easy from here, isn't it? Ah, he goes to the outside. Can't quite do it. He now goes to the inside, the switchback, nicely done. He's side by side as they come onto the main straight. And this is for the lead of the race. Rydquist knows he's in a battle now. Rydquist the Swede holding on. They're side by side as they come down to the source. Something's got to give. And this has been perfectly run by Dylan Archer. What a classic overtake maneuver. 
Three corners to do it, but I think Dylan Archer may have got this, but back comes Ryquist, and here comes Southern into the battle. Down towards Eau Rouge. Breathe in, everyone. Oh, and up they go. And somehow, Ryquist holds on. And now it's a three-way battle, and surely now, Ryquist is absolutely the target, because here comes Archer. But Archer's going to be on the outside. He's going to try to go to the inside. Great stuff. Archer goes into the lead. Here comes Southern. Archer takes the lead from Ryquist. Here comes JP Southern. Two teenagers taking on the vastly experienced as Carl Ryquist. Fantastic racing here at Trans Am. And now Southern wants by. But Dylan Archer leads the race. Could he get his first win in Trans Am? The ArcherBrothersSports.com on the back of the rear wing. And he's already starting to build on that lead as he comes through Puan. You can see the gap for yourself. He's got about a half a second, maybe just over now on Ridequist, who's got his own troubles with Southern. He's trying to defend from Southern. Meanwhile, Hurley and Casera are a second away from each other, six and seventh on the road. More drama to come from this one, and there's battles all the way through. Ben Ayer and Merrill still going at it in fourth and fifth. Early holding off Casera. Savagian hasn't recovered from that incident. He's down in eighth as we go on board with JP Southern out of Stabilo. Fifth gear, 150. Flat out, you can see he's on the rev limiter as they go through Blanchemont. Now, look at this, Casera and Hurley. Because Hurley's got traffic. Hurley does not want to be battling with Merrill right now, and he's going to get past Merrill. He does so, and that's a good, good move by Josh Hurley. And that could be the most important move he's made all day in the Corvette, because he's given himself a little bit of space between himself and Tyler Casera as they come towards the source. And time running out in what has been a fascinating run here at Spa. I'll tell all about it to Ben afterwards, and I'll make up all sorts of stories, and you'll have to believe them. And Casera goes 2.16.6. He's really up the pace now. Sensational lap. That's the fastest lap of the day, I think. Faster than his pole time, uh, than his uh, qualifying time, for sure. I think he did a 2.69 in qualifying. And now back to the front with Ridequist, Archer and Southern. Southern's lost off a little bit of time. But what a race. The top eight, less than a second. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this at Spa. Now, can Ridequist come back? He hasn't had a victory yet, Carl Ridequist. And this would be a great opportunity. Ooh, and Archer goes very wide. But the good thing about that corner is you can do that. Same here as well. Spa, although it's very tricky, is forgiving in a lot of areas like this. Into turn 13, campus and 14. No room for an overtake there, possible overtake, but really, as we saw before, your best bet is to duck under at Stavlo and wait for the chicane. And that's exactly what Casera's thinking of doing now, but he's running out of time, he's got Merrill as the human bollard, effectively, or the Corvette bollard, because he wants by and he wants bad by anxiously. You can see by the lines he's taking, he's getting desperate as we go on board with Tyler Casera. Shaved his head specially for the weekend. Flat out through Blanchemont. Doesn't lift. Just a blip into six gear there for the moment. Most of them actually on the rev limiter and five as they come into Lecum and to the bus stop. And now time running out though. If Casera is going to make his move on Merrill and go after early, he's got to do it soon. Meanwhile at the front, Archer under massive pressure. This is as close as Ryquist has been. The gap is 0.3 of a second as they head down the hill towards Eau Rouge. Ryquist will definitely have a chance for an overtake down the straight. And a 2.17.6 by Archer. Oh, look at this racing. Now.
Now Hurley under pressure. Big time from Ben Yahia. And he jinks out. And Hurley's got to be careful here. He doesn't need to get involved in this battle. He better just stand out of the way. But he wants to keep a buffer, obviously. Oh, no! Hurley gets turned round! Hurley turns around. And I don't think it was anyone's fault but his own. Here comes Tyler Casera. He's passed. And that has changed the complexion of this race. Well, there's a famous book called Lost in the Woods by Bill Bryson. And I think that's just become a reality for Josh Hurley because that has just played perfectly into the hands of Tyler Casera. Meanwhile, back at the front, it's far from over in our final lap. Ryquist trying desperately to see if he can stop Dylan Archer, who's on his way to take the family name to another family victory. But none of his fathers, grandfathers, or any of the team have ever won at Spa, I wouldn't have thought. But young Dylan's going to do it. Unless I've just uh, jinxed him. But here comes Ryquist. He's got one last chance, has the 46. But I don't think he's close enough. And that is absolute desperate, desperate times for Josh Hurley down in eighth position, but I'd love to see that again because I don't think anybody touched him. I think he was just too hot into Le Coombe and, and, and spun himself around. Either way, Archer on his way to victory. Into the chicane he comes. And that's been a brilliant run. His overtaking and his race craft way beyond his years. And sure enough, it's going to be Dylan Archer who takes victory here at Spa Franco Champ as he dives into La Source. Carl Ryquist, second place, and that's going to help Carl's championship hopes too, especially with Hurley finishing down in eight. Career is going to finish in the top ten. And down the hill they come. There's Casera. And so Casera does finish the race in fourth position. Here comes Hurley, and he does finish the race in eight. So that has given the championship lead to Tyler Casera. With four races to go, the championship very much on a knife edge still after a fascinating and enthralling Spa-Franco-Champ. Well, they will be chatting heavily in the brew houses of Spa and Cologne tonight. No question about it. And there is your winner. He's got the family emblem on the side of the car as well as the Forge Line sponsorship. And it's Donuts in Spa. <laughs> Tommy Archer on the side of the car, and he can be very proud with the young nipper. I think he needs to do more, more Donuts. Well, that was an excellent run. So another winner, Cameron Lawrence has won a race. Ernie Francis Jr. has won a race. Edward Savagian has won a race. Tyler Casera and Josh Hurley have won all the others, but now Archer joins the winner's list, and here he is. So, what a day. And no rain. And no Ben. Hey-ho. Here's a check on the results. As the quietness envelops the Ardennes, and everybody takes a deep breath to confirm those results. But it's going to be Dylan Archer with victory. We look down the famous O Rouge. There you go. Confirmation then. Dylan Archer with victory. Ridequist second. Southern third. Tyler Casera. That's the significant one. The man from Manaheim takes fourth. Ben Hayer is fifth. Merrill Savagian Hurley. Career finishes in the top 10. And how about this? Scott Borchetta has done it. He's told me he'd get a top 10, and he's done it. He did 223 practice laps, and it's paid off. Scott Borchetta of Nashville, Tennessee, gets into the top 10. Edward Savagian will be delighted with that result, as he's his mentor and coach. Wood, Francis Jr., Alan, Racino, Lawrence. Francis Jr. will be disappointed with that 12th place. Lawrence gets up to 15th. Lotoski, 16th. Winston, fine. White, Vaccaro, white. Toledano in 22nd place ahead of Lopez and Boris said. What a day here in Spa. Archer is the winner. And Tyler Casera takes the lead of the championship. And Ben Sissel 
is lost in the woods. That concludes our coverage of the Spa race. We've got four more races to go, one next weekend and the weekend after. We're going back to yesteryear next week, and then we finish it all off at Lime Rock. I'm Jonathan Green. Join us next week for more fun in the sun of Trans Am.